God of all creation, unbound by space and time. We confess our weariness as we log on once more in search of a holy connection. Though we would not choose to meet this way, we hold to the promise that you choose always to meet us where we are. When we feel the inadequacy of digital presence, remind us that you, O oh Lord, are fully present, even here. When we feel the strain of needing to perform who we are, when we are seen but not known, remind us that you, O oh Lord, know us completely. When we are tempted to trust the illusion of the screen and flatten others in dismissal, remind us that behind each square sits a living, breathing child of God. Behind each comment, a person in need of your love. When we fail to engage others well, show us your grace. When others fail to engage us well, may we show your grace. When it feels as though even our prayers are spoken into a void, speak to us your words of life, which never return empty. When we come to the edge of our limits, surprise us again with the fullness of your life. A life that lives in and flows through each of us, unhindered by blurry pixels and distorted sound. Lord Jesus Christ, image of the invisible God, give us faith to see your substance in the virtual. O Christ, in whom all things hold together, hold us together even in this time of physical separation. By your Spirit, make us one, as your Spirit has always done. That in the endless bluish glow that illumines our days and nights, we might be able still to see your endless light. Merry Christmas Eve. This year, as we gather together with family in this new way, we gather to center ourselves and remember the long-awaited birth of Christ. This evening, we'll be singing a couple of carols together, listening to the story of hope, and lighting candles together as we sing Silent Night. This is a new way of gathering for Christmas Eve, and yet it allows us to hold on to some of our most precious traditions. If you haven't already, I want to invite you to grab a candle and some matches for later. Any candle will do. I'll be using one of our, one of our jar candles later. And so tonight, let us center ourselves on the birth of of the blessed Savior Jesus. Let us join together to worship the God who fulfills all promises, Jesus Christ, the hope born of Mary and the Holy Spirit, who fuels our hope as we await Christ's return. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, 
shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thy advent Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadow.
Christ is born in a Christmas Eve, my family would gather together at my grandpa's house to eat, to laugh, and to share stories. One of the moments that I miss the most was also the moment that drove me absolutely crazy as a kid. You see, before we were allowed to open any of the presents that sat beneath the tree, my, my grandpa would pull out his giant Bible, like three times the size of this thing and slowly turn to Luke chapter 2, like really, really slowly. It was here that he said we would learn about the greatest gift of all, the, the true reason why we celebrate. And even though my grandfather passed away a few years ago, I know that he would enjoy this moment, reading together of the greatest gift ever given. Luke chapter 2. About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. 
This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judea, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiance, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel. There were sheep herders camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watchers over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angels stood among them and God's glory blazed around them. They, they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town. A savior who is Messiah and master. This is what you're to look for. A baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once, the angels was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the sheep herders talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left, running, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about the child. All who heard the shepherds were impressed. And Mary? Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. The shepherds returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they'd been told. When the eighth day arrived, the day of circumcision, the child was named Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived. Then, when the days stipulated by Moses for purification were complete, they took him up to Jerusalem to offer him to God as commanded in God's law. Every male who opens the womb shall be a holy offering to God and also to sacrifice the pair of, of doves or two young pigeons as prescribed by God's law. In Jerusalem at that time, there was a man named Simeon, a, a, a good man, a man who lived in the prayerful expectancy of help for Israel. And the Holy Spirit was on him. The Holy Spirit had shown him that he would see the Messiah of God before he died. Led by the Spirit, he entered the temple. As the parents of the child Jesus brought him in to carry out the rituals of the law, Simeon took him into his arms and blessed God. God, you can now release your servant. Release me in peace as you have promised. With my own eyes, I've seen your salvation. It's now out in the open for everyone to see, a God revealing light to the non-Jewish nations and of glory for your people Israel. Jesus' father and mother were speechless with surprise at these words. And Simeon? Simeon went on to bless them and said to Mary, his mother, This child marks both the failure and the recovery of many in Israel. A figure misunderstood and contradicted. The pain of a sword thrust through you, but the rejection will force honesty as God reveals who they really are. Anna, the prophetess, was also there, a daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher. She was by now a very old woman. She had been married for seven years and a widow for 84. She never left the temple area, worshiping night and day with her fastings and prayers. At the very time Simeon was praying, she showed up, broke into an anthem of praise to God, and talked about the child to all who were waiting expectantly for the, for the freeing of Jerusalem. When they finished everything required by God and the law, they returned to Galilee and their own town, Nazareth. There the child grew strong in body and wise in spirit, and the grace of God was on him. The grace, the mercy, and the hope revealed to us in the words of our Lord. May this story find roots of hope within your spirit, within your mind, within your heart, 
and within your being. May you find peace and joy in these words this Christmas season, as together we continue to watch and wait for the long-expected Jesus to return. Amen. One of the great Christmas traditions is the lighting of candles. I'll never forget the year Elliot caught one of her pigtails on fire for all to see. The lighting of the candle is a beautiful reminder of the words of John, that what came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness, and the darkness couldn't put it out. When we light the Christ candle, we remember that the light has come to extinguish the darkness. And so, as we light the candle this evening, with voices rising, rising like incense, we pray. We prayed in hope. We reached to you in hope. We sang in hope. We shouted with hope. Tonight, we see in the shadows and the shine the holy mystery of a hope fulfilled and a hope to come. Tonight, we move in hope. We move as a people waking from a slumber, like a new parent hearing a cry in the night, for unto us a child is born. We move with confidence and praise because hope has arrived. You have increased our joy. We move with determination that liberation is not just our destiny, but our reality. The rod of the oppressors you have broken. We move because the one born this night invites us to come and follow. We move because the Christ tells us, take up your cross. We move to bear one another's burden like Simon of Cyrene, who held the cross of Jesus. We move in the march toward freedom. We move towards the promised land. We move forward in hope. We move in hope because hope moved into the world. This one shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the strength of God, eternal protector, champion of peace. We move in hope, O oh God. We move forward in hope. Let us sing together of the silent night. Silence night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, silence night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing Alleluia. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the 
Savior is born. Thank you for celebrating with us this year, of gathering together for a simple Christmas, to remember the greatest gift of all. As a church, we pray the same prayer every single time we gather together. It's, it's our benediction. It's the prayer that we pray in the hopes that we would be formed and shaped and molded by, that, that together we would look more and more like this Jesus. And so tonight, let us pray the same prayer of benediction and of formation. May God bless you with discomfort and easy answers, hard hearts, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may seek truth boldly and live from deep within your heart where God's Spirit dwells. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that we may reach out our hand in comfort and turn their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that through Jesus Christ we'll have the strength and power necessary to create change in this world and in our neighborhood so that together we will courageously try what others claim cannot be done. May God bless you with remembrance that we are called to continue God's redemptive work of love and healing in God's place in and through God's name, in God's spirit, continually creating and breathing new life and grace into everything and everyone we touch. Amen and Merry Christmas.